years ago, when I just started making videos, a lot of topics were usually somewhat hypothetical and basically involved the idea of, okay, what if this happens? Or maybe that happens? And some of the more popular videos were actually about planet Earth and usually involving some kind of a major catastrophe or some kind of a hypothetical event billions and billions of years in the future. Now, I don't want to link those videos because that's basically me from years ago and it's kind of cringy to watch, but we are going to be discussing one of those topics once again. What's going to happen to planet Earth when the sun becomes a supergiant? And the reason we're discussing this is because of a recent study. A study that focused on a star known as Rho Corona Borealis, roughly around 57 light years away from us, a star that has surprisingly sun-like features. With one major difference. It's much, much older. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this relatively new study that as always you can find in the description below, talk a little bit more about the star system that you see right here and why it's so exciting, but also discuss what's most likely going to happen to Earth after all, at least according to the scientists behind the study. But I guess first, a brief review of what we actually think is going to happen to the Sun in the next few billions of years. And here is the best way to visualize the entire life of the Sun in one single image. Basically, it all started with some kind of a cloud long time ago, it then condensed into a solar system as we know today, and it will eventually become a cloud once again, but also leave behind a white dwarf. But right before that happens, it's going to become what's known as a red giant. Think Beetlejuice, but just a little bit smaller and a little bit less massive. This is something that's going to start in approximately 5 billion years from now, but exactly how this continues and exactly how the sun evolves is still not entirely well understood, for one simple reason. We unfortunately do not have enough examples of sun-like stars in different parts of their evolution, and that's really the only way we can potentially resolve this issue in order to understand how the sun evolves over time. But right now the assumption is that it's going to grow by approximately 200 times at least, and by that time and also even after that, it's going to lose a part of its mass. That's actually why we see so many different planetary nebula around the galaxy. All of these were formed by red giant stars that as they expand and as they evolve, start losing mass. Here is probably the most famous one, the Helix Nebula. But in order to understand this entire process, we obviously have to try to find various examples of other similar stars during different parts of evolution. And in the last decade or so, there have been some really intriguing discoveries that actually do prove a lot of these assumptions from a lot of different star systems. For example, slightly earlier, in 2023, we've discussed an observation from an unusual star that's over 10,000 light years away from us. And here this was an unusual red nova observation, which implied a collision with some kind of a star somewhere out there. And turns out that this seems to match directly with a red giant star consuming one of its planets. Basically confirming our predictions about planets relatively close to stars that become red giants. You can actually learn more about the star and what happens to this planet in one of the videos in the description, but this of course led to the next question. What about the solar system? And when it comes to the solar system, the assumption is that the sun is either going to be just a little bit smaller than the orbit of planet Earth, or will maybe even reach almost to the Martian orbit. And the reason there is so much uncertainty is because right now it's impossible to establish how much mass the sun will lose over time. But we can establish this by looking at other similar stars with very similar mass and other similar properties. And it just so happens that this is one such star system. This star is extremely similar to our sun in mass and in size, and just to make things even more interesting, has four planets in a relatively similar orbit where we find Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. But also one main difference. This star is 9 to 10 billion years old. Which in this case allows the scientists to potentially calculate how much mass would be lost in stars similar to our sun and thus start making more accurate predictions about the red giant sun as well. So basically the star represents the sun right before it becomes a red giant. But as you can see from the simulation, it also has four planets extremely close to the star as well. And in this simulation, the closest one has already started to feel its effects. Basically, the atmosphere here is evaporating really quickly. And so by modeling the star and what happens to it in the next 2 billion years, the main researcher was able to discover the most likely fate of all of these planets, but then also apply these results to planet Earth. In case you're wondering, the closest planet here is approximately 3.8 masses of planet Earth, the second planet is very similar in mass to Jupiter, 
and the last two planets are extremely similar to Neptune. And in the next billion years, all of them are going to start slowly disappearing. Three of the inner planets are very likely going to be swallowed completely, with each falling apart slightly differently. It's quite likely that the innermost terrestrial planet is basically going to completely evaporate. I mean, you can sort of see it already happening in this simulation, but that's just a start. It will probably take a few hundred years to disappear completely, but as the surface of this planet is heated up, a lot of silicates and a lot of other materials are going to become vapor and will then get slowly blown away by the star itself. And so after just a few hundred years, possibly a thousand years, this planet will be no more. And that's most likely what's going to happen to Mercury as well. The next planet though, which is Jupiter-like in its mass and very likely its composition, will not experience the same effects. And though one of the assumptions here is that it is going to be destroyed, but in this case through tidal disruption, or basically a similar effect to how we believe rings of Saturn formed, in this case this is just a moon, but here we're talking about an entire planet, on the other hand, not so long ago we've discussed an unusual planet, in this case a planet known as Hala, that's believed to have survived being engulfed by its star. And that planet was also Jupiter-like in mass, and so there's maybe a slight chance it might survive after all. But at least for now, we're going to assume that it is going to be destroyed after all. Something similar will probably happen to the third planet, but the fourth planet whose orbit takes 282 days and whose orbit is very similar to Venus, according to the researcher, does have a very high chance to potentially survive. As a matter of fact, as the star expands, because it's also losing some of its mass, it's going to lose just a little bit of gravitational pull and thus extend the orbit of the planet, making it move farther and farther away. And though it might engulf the planet, with some of its outer layers for approximately several thousand years, there's a very high chance that the planet will not fall apart and will come out of the star eventually when the star shrinks again. And because it's going to most likely lose a huge amount of its atmosphere, at that point it's also going to transform into a potentially different type of a planet, either a super-Earth or maybe even a terrestrial planet. Although because the red giant stage does actually involve several shrinking and expanding events, this particular planet might get engulfed several times. And the remnant of this planet will also be orbiting at a much farther distance, possibly even in a very similar orbit to planet Earth. And so for at least some time when the star shrinks once again, this planet might become a terrestrial planet orbiting in a similar orbit to planet Earth. And it's really because of this planet that here the researcher comes to a conclusion that this is possibly what's going to happen to Earth as well. It's either going to graze the surface of the sun for several thousand years and eventually survive by moving farther and farther away, or may potentially get swallowed by the sun for at least some time, escaping as a slightly transformed planet later on, possibly losing some of its surface crust and possibly even acquiring something else in the process, but it is going to be different and not the same Earth as we know today. But then when the sun finishes its evolution, just like many other red giants, it's going to become a white dwarf. And we know that many have been discovered to possess their own planets, which very likely transformed in a very similar way. And though we do see signs of swallowed planets inside white dwarfs, or even planets that have been shredded apart, forming rings around them, there have been cases of white dwarfs with planets in what's known as the habitable zone. Basically planets where technically you could have liquid water. More videos in the description explain this better. And so because of this sun-like star system with four planets, we now have a little bit more detail of what's most likely going to happen to planet Earth in the next few billions of years. It might survive after all, it might become a transformed world, and it might end up orbiting a white dwarf at a relatively far away distance for billions and possibly trillions of years. Until this white dwarf eventually becomes a black dwarf. And at that point we don't really know what's going to happen, but chances are because of the gravitational interactions, most planets will become rogue planets by then and just fly around interstellar space completely by themselves. And so definitely an intriguing study and a somewhat intriguing analysis and a few more answers about the future of planet Earth. We'll talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries. Until then, check out previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.